Hi friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. Today I'm going to be making ghost outfits for the theatre. Okay so I have been a member of the Little Theatre in Southport for a few months now. It's a great theatre, it's all volunteer led and it's just such a wonderful atmosphere. I am primarily being in the costuming department because, hello, it's me. And when the opportunity came up to make some ghost costumes for a production of Blythe Spirit, I jumped at the chance. I thought it'd be such a fun project to do. I was umming and ahhing a little bit about whether I was going to make this into a video or not. So the actual construction parts of this video jumps in after the first fitting. We already knew that we wanted to make the outer kind of shimmery ghost costumes ourselves because we didn't have anything in the theatre that would be suitable for that. I also ended up taking on a second project as well, which was an underdress for one of the characters. This was because she needed to be able to glide around the stage and we didn't have anything that really looked good for that. There was one dress that fit her quite well, but it was a bit tight around the thighs and around the bottom. Not really enough to have that kind of dancey, glidey quality. So I decided I was going to make a 1930s style dress. Decided to go with grey because it's a ghost. And found some lovely fabric for that in Abacan in Liverpool. It was cheap and it had a nice drape and that's why we went with it. This was the dress we were originally going to go with. It's nice, it's 1930s, but the overdress would have got caught on all these little beads and stuff, which wouldn't have been great. The colour is very similar to the colour of the background of the set, which also isn't fantastic. This is just a bit more yellow toned. And like I said, it just wasn't the right shape for something ghostly. I was able to use that dress to make a pattern from, which was a great jumping off point. For the dress for the other character, I was able to use my basic block because luckily her measurements weren't that far off from mine. So they just needed a few little alterations here and there. Before we get stuck in, I would just like to say that I apologise for my appearance in this video. One of the unfortunate realities of being a disabled costumer is often appearance takes a back seat, like, <laughs> and the costuming takes priority. <laughs> so yeah, apologies for the state of me. <laughs> Without further ado, let's crack on. Right, it's late and I look a mess, but today went really, really well. I had some fittings with the two actors who are playing the ghost characters. So far, for the character who is playing a ghost through the entire play, I've got the underdress as kind of like a, a block pattern mock-up of a dress done. And for the character who becomes a ghost later, I've got the overdress mock-up done. Both of these only really needed a few minor things. One of them needed taking in quite a bit at the waist, but that's a simple thing. I can just take it out of the darts. And the other one just needed the waistline moving up a little bit and then taking a little bit out around the shoulder area. What I need to do now is because I have got them patterned like a kind of normal like block pattern with darts, I need to turn one of them into a 1930s kind of cocktail dress kind of thing. And I need to turn the other one into the same shape, but with princess seams. Because, one second, This is the fabric that I'm going to be using for the outer dress. It's got a really nice shine to it and the idea is that that'll catch the light and it'll look kind of shimmery and kind of ghost-like. It is, however, very thin. Like, really thin. And if I do big darts in this, you're going to be able to see them. It's going to be really obvious. 
so I think princess seams are going to look a lot better. Something else that I'm going to do, which I had advice on today from somebody who's been working in the theatre for quite a while, is about how to fasten it, quick changes. My original plan was to have it to go over the actor's head and fasten with hooks and eyes down the side. With how delicate this fabric is and the amount of time she's going to have to get in and out of this costume, it's going to end up wrecking the seams. So what I'm going to do is have the entire back open and have it closed with poppers so she'll be able to basically just step into the costume. And I'm going to do some detailing down the seams so it doesn't look really weird because that back area is going to need to be reinforced if it's going to be having the poppers undone all, all the time. What I'm thinking is that kind of like cording detail that you get on like fancy chairs and stuff like that around the outside. You probably don't know what I mean, but I can I know what I mean. <laughs> When I get some, if I can find some, I will show you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm thinking some like cording detail on each of the seams will look really, really nice in like a grey or like silver will be even better. Something that's going to catch the light in a similar way to this. For the character who is going to be a ghost the entire time, I have got this grey fabric, which I'm going to make the dress out of. It's nothing fancy, but it's got a really nice drape to it. So I think that's going to work really, really well for the 1930s dress. So the plan of action now is to make a note of the alterations on the original pattern that I made and then convert those patterns. So I'll get back to you when I'm doing that. Okay, so I've made quite a few adjustments to this. You can't really see the pencil lines from before, but basically the dart came in like that before. There's a dart up here as well. So what I have done is taken it in at the waist. I also needed to take it in at the top of the chest as well because it was gaping quite badly at the top of the neckline. This dart is now stupidly big so what I'm going to do is take some of this out and swing it into the side. Once I've got this basic kind of shape right though, what I need to do is bring the neckline down like that. This dart is going to be turned into gathering. I might even, bar I'll have to look at some examples of like actual 30s dresses. I'm not sure if I need to get rid of this side dart or not. I'll see how we are. But it, from the waist, it needs to come up into a point like that as well. And then all this area is gathered in. Then there's two seams going down the skirt portion of the dress. This works out great for me because I want it to flare out quite a bit. So I can put some godets into those seams and make it really nice and flary. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that one. I'm not too worried about this area here, like I said, because I'm going to be changing the neckline of this anyway. So that should be okay. Yeah, it's just fiddling about with these darts. Right, I have made all of the alterations, put them onto a new pattern piece. Shrunk this dart down, swung some of it over here. So what I need to do now is do my line going up like that and change the neckline here. I also need to work out my gathering situation over here. So. I think what I'm going to do is rewatch the Closet Historian video where she talks about manipulating darts and putting gathers in places because off the top of my head I cannot remember how to do it. Right, so after rewatching that video I came up with this for the front. So I'm just going to have a little bit of gathering at the top there 
and then it's going to be gathered along here. Then I've got a separate piece that goes along the bottom and comes to a point up at the top. Neckline has also been changed. And then the back, because on the dresses which I was using for an example, there wasn't a back view. I've just kind of carried the panel on along the back there. For the skirt sections, I've kept it pretty simple. I've basically just cut them both in half. This will be cut on the fold, the little front bit. And then the idea is I'll sew them down to like about here. And then the rest of it is going to have like go days inserted in there. So it will flare out and be really, really flowy. I did a slight bust adjustment to one of the dress patterns before turning the darts into princess seams. Fabric has been pre-washed and it turns out it's the kind of fabric that likes to crease just from breathing on it, which is just wonderful. <laughs> I've done some final fittings with the actors and one of them fit really, really nicely and the other one just needed a slight adjustment to the bust point. But other than that, I'm there. I have got completed patterns and it is time to start cutting out. I don't want to have to be rushing everything. I know I'd like to get them all done but I'm going to take my time and pace myself. So to start off with I'm going to get Elvira's underdress done. So that is what we are doing today. See what I mean about all the creasing? This is literally just from I ironed it yesterday and then folded it up and all those lines and stuff are from it being folded. I think it's going to be a case of steam it before each performance. Right, you probably can't see this. But what I've done is I have drawn pencil lines around everything. I've also extended these pieces out. I didn't make it into an actual pattern, like with like the big flared out bits, purely because of lack of paper. So I've drawn with pencil lines following out as if it, this was an A-line skirt pattern but more flared. The other reason why I've drawn on this is because we want to make this dress so that it can be adjustable so if somebody who is a bigger size needs to be a ghost they can wear this dress too. So I'm going to be making all my seam allowances around an inch and a half so the it can be taken out quite a bit. That also applies to places like on the bodice. I'm also going to be extending these bits out a bit as well. So I need my pencil lines so that I have got a solid sewing line to use as a guide because I'm going to get myself very very confused if I'm just trying to use the kind of indicator bits on the sewing machine I will quickly forget which one I'm supposed to be using. Okay, so I have done my darts in the back. The back is split up into two parts. So we've got the main upper part and then we've got this little lower part. So I've just pinned those together and they need to be sewn. I've done that with the fashion fabric and the lining, even though the lining is the same fabric as this, which is probably gonna get confusing for me. I didn't quite have enough, so I've not got those really really big seam allowances on the lining bits so if it does need altering at some point in the future 
I may need to cut some new lining, but I've not got anything suitable in at the moment. So, but that's something that future me can worry about. After I've sewn these, it's going to be gathering on the top section of the front parts. The sun definitely isn't on my side today. I did film pinning all of this, but it was so blown out that you couldn't actually see anything. I pinned around the armhole and neck of the front piece and the two back pieces. That way I can essentially bag line it. Okay, I think where I left off last time, I'd pretty much finished the grey underdress. That has now been finished. I have done a fitting with the actor and it fits really, really nicely. I will include a little clip here of her dancing around the stage in it. I have also made, well, nearly made one of the ghost dresses which is behind me here. I wanted to make one first without having to worry about like where the camera is and all that kind of stuff because I've never worked with such slippery material before and it is horrible. It is truly horrible working with this material. It's slippy, pins won't stay in it, it frays just from looking at it so, yeah, not, not the best. I did discover that not pinning it and just kind of placing one bit and guiding it with my fingers was probably easier because the pins were just falling out. Later on, when I was doing the sleeves on this one, I ended up just doing them by hand <laughs> because it was easier to keep control of the fabric that way. I do have a little bit of a worry now though. I've got one more dress to make and I definitely don't have enough of this fabric. I also can't get any more of this fabric until tomorrow because it is currently the Queen's funeral and all the shops are closed. So my plan is I'm going to make as much of it as I can with the fabric that I've got and then tomorrow trip to Liverpool. I do also have another little issue, which was that I accidentally cut the front panel on that one a little bit too short. I've seen that you can get mending tape, which kind of goes clear. So I'm going to see, I'll do a little test and see if that will work. That'll be something to pick up tomorrow. I'm really hoping it does work because otherwise it's just going to be really annoying that it's like an inch too short. I do want this to be just a little bit shorter than the grey dress though because it's such delicate fabric. I don't want there to be any possibility of her accidentally like stepping on it or getting it caught on anything because it could rip really, really easily. So the plan is to do as much of this dress as possible once I've got to the point where there's literally nothing else I can do because I've not got any fabric, then put the sleeves on that one. I've managed to get the front piece, the side front piece, one part of a sleeve, both of the top parts of the sleeve. I'm hoping that there's a little bit towards the bottom which is out of frame that I might be able to get the other part of the bottom of the sleeve out of. That means, theoretically, I only need to get a metre of this fabric to fit the side back and back on. So it's not quite as bad as I thought it was.
I stitched the front pieces together. As I said earlier, I found it easier not using pins because they just kept falling out. I did French seams because I thought they would give me a bit more stability and wouldn't take as long as hand felling. I did try ironing it, but it wasn't having it, so I stitched each seam down flat. Next was constructing the sleeves. I stitched the top parts together, leaving a slit at the top for the gusset. Then I stitched along the top and bottom of the lower sleeve and attached the two parts together. I did a lot of the sleeve construction by hand because I found it easier to control the fabric that way. It was just so slippery. Okay, so as you know, I ran out of fabric. Not a problem though, I thought, go to Liverpool, get some more. No. Abacan, don't have any more. I even tried ringing up the Birkenhead one and they didn't have any either. So I was stuck. Um, I've ended up getting some light grey organza. This is it. It's not a great match though. It's a little bit more on the kind of purpley side. If I put these both together, this one's got more of a kind of green tone to it and then this one's got more of a kind of like purpley tone to it. So that's a bit annoying. It's also not shimmery because they didn't have any shimmery organza. It has got shine to it though. Not sure if, how well you can see that. So it will still catch the light and you know what worst case scenario I can spray it with some glitter spray or something. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do to kind of because it's gonna look really really weird if I've got the front and the arms made of this one and then the back made of that one. I'm going to see if I've got enough, I'm going to conserve as much fabric as possible and try and incorporate some of this into the front and then hopefully that will help it kind of tie together a bit more. We shall see. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to do this. <laughs> Once I've got this done though, it's pretty easy to put together it's just a case of doing the same with the back that I did at the front which I've already got footage of put on the sleeves because sleeves are already done and then doing the poppers at the back and hemming and stuff I'm probably going to hem things tomorrow because ideally I would like to get the actors to try them on so I can test the length of the sleeves and stuff so I'm a little bit stressed <laughs> But hopefully this will work out. <laughs> I stitched the back parts together using the same method as the front. I finished the side edges on both of the front and back pieces, then stitched them together. My thinking was that okay, it'd be so easier Tuesday to take them apart fittings. and replace One them of back really at some nicely, point if I managed to get some more really, of that really fabric. Long, so they needed shortening. The other one, it wasn't quite fitting in the back. There was a bit of a gap where it wasn't closing. This is strange because the mock-up I made closed really well at the back. So I'm going to put this down to a quirk of the fabric because it fits the back of the neck, it fits the waistline, but then not the bit in the middle. So what I did was I've made like a little extension piece, um, which just, well, it was two pieces, one for each side to widen that area. And then last night was the first dress rehearsal and we tried it on. 
fit really nicely, looks really, really good, really, really happy with it. But the seams bust. Just one of them, and it's like, I'll show you in a second. So this needs a repair. It also tells me that there was a little bit too much pressure on that seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unpick the French seams on the side seams and the side back seams. And I'm going to make them a bit smaller. So in total with all four, if I let them out a little bit by like quarter of an inch, that should give me a total of an inch worth of ease. So I think the reason why it happened is because that actor's part is very mobile. And there's one point where she's like doing a lot of stuff on the couch. And I think that's where it happened with the moving around and stuff. And those seams just weren't quite good enough. So I am going to do this repair. I'm going to let those seams out. The other thing that I need to do is on the other costume, I need to finish off sewing the sleeves on properly because they're just kind of tacked on at the moment. I need to hem the end of the sleeve. I have also, after last night, decided that I am not going to hem these dresses just because it's going to create a really ugly line and I really liked the way they looked, like how they just like, they finished just nice and cleanly. So I don't have any fray check. I went to Dunelm and they didn't have any. For some reason they felt that anti-static spray was more important than fray check. So I did some digging online and it looks like clear nail varnish will basically do the same thing. So I'm going to use clear nail varnish on the hems of both dresses and that will hopefully stop them from hemming. So I'm just going to show you the back of this and then I'm going to crack on. This is the bit that I'm talking about, that little tear there on that seam and you can see the little extension pieces that I put in. And it's literally, you can see that it's frayed from the seam allowance so it's just pulled out basically so i'm going to use some of that fusible webbing stuff and fingers crossed that will work and yeah i'll let out these princess seams because they're quite thick so i do have some wiggle room with letting them out I used a bit of the other organza material because that was a bit more stable and a piece of the web to make the repair. After that, the dresses were done. So what do you think? I'm actually really proud of what I was able to achieve. This was my first time making clothes for people who weren't me. So there were loads of fitting challenges and stuff which I hadn't come across before. So this has really taught me so much about the whole fitting process and drafting process. I ended up going back and watching a lot of closet historian videos for this because there was a lot of dart manipulation and stuff that I'd not done before, so lessons learned there as well. 
I'm really pleased with how the grey underdress turned out. It looked so lovely on stage, it was so flowy. I never thought I'd use four metres of fabric in a sleeveless dress. So yeah, all that was flowiness. It looked so lovely on stage, I'm so pleased. And so many other people gave me compliments on it. The overdresses, on the other hand, I'm not as pleased with. I think on stage they did look good but I kept seeing all the problems with them. I'm never, like I've said before, I'm never using that fabric again. Never, ever, ever, you cannot make me, I will not do it. I'm not touching that fabric ever again. <laughs> the big problem I had was I couldn't cut two pieces that needed to be identical, identical. It shifted way too much, so, I ended up with weird problems with twisting happening because places like important places like the apexes and the waistline and stuff weren't quite matching up so everything was kind of askew like that. Yeah, hopefully people didn't notice like uh, nobody else mentioned it to me so I am hoping that nobody else really noticed that it was doing this weird twisting. Backstage I did mention to one of the other cast members who is helping one of the ghosts get into her costume that yes it is meant to be on a slant like that, that's just the way the fabric ended up being cut, it is the fabric's fault. <laughs> Overall though, I am really, really pleased with how everything's turned out. Fingers crossed, at time of filming, they haven't come undone again, but they do have my number if they do, and then I can quickly run down there. Well, I say run. Um, and fix that problem if it arises. Everybody in the costuming department has now put me under strict instructions not to take on anything like that again, because it was way too much work. <laughs> I ended up putting myself under way too much pressure. My problem is I get excited. My brain is going, oh, do this, do this, do this, do this. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be great. You're going to do this and you're going to do this. And my body is going, no, no, what are you playing at? So yeah, I'm, I'm under strict instructions now not to do that again. <laughs> I'll still make stuff. And I'll still do alterations to things and stuff and f fix buttons and stuff, but I'm not going to take on three dresses at all at once. <laughs> I'd like to say a massive, massive thank you to Trudy and Philippa for helping out with this and being awesome through all my fittings and stuff. And everybody else involved in the production for putting up with me, coming in and interrupting rehearsals and stuff to do fittings. You've all been great and it has been so, so awesome getting to see the final production when it's all finished and everything and with the crowd there it was such a great atmosphere so yeah thanks again if you've enjoyed this video and fancy giving it a little like it would be very much appreciated i'm always open to your suggestions and constructive feedback so anything you'd like to see let me know in the comments and if you'd like to see more videos of me trying to make things then why not subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified next time i upload a video youtube is saying you might enjoy this video here and thanks very much for watching and i will see you next time <laughs> bye